Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me now? It is my honor to be here today and look at your faces and acknowledge all your accomplishments and everything about the little bit of coaching problems for bringing me in here and the Community College for inviting me. So I'm going to share a little bit uh, about you know, my journey. Um, everyone has a journey, as well as you say, a path to get where they got to. You know, when you talk about, you know, as people of color, the struggle. You know, there's a lot more to the regular life obstacles, depending on your background, as you say, your skin is. So, you know, rather than the struggles, but the challenges that we have to, you know, go through and to be where we're going to be. And this is, for some of you, you know, a, a step to another step. To another step. There's always more steps. And so, you know, I'll just tell you a little bit about my story. I was born in Jamaica. Very small island, I'm growing up and I live in Rhode Island. Most of my adolescence was spent in the beach. So I go on my creeds, you know what I mean? I spent years in Brooklyn, went to school down south. Most every Sunday I'm at the Lizard Lounge, but right now I'm here and you're looking me down. I'm on the flat, yo, and it means. I was born in a very small island, I'm growing up and I live in Rhode Island. Most of my adolescence was spent in the beach. So I go on my creeds. You know what I mean? Years in the school down south, most every summer, at the lizard lot, you might come out and be put in it. When I was just six years old, I had to wash dishes. Standing on a wooden box over an outdoor sink, with a coconut brush in one hand and a bar of ivory soap in the other, I would scrub away with my little arms without the option of Hot water. And my grandfather used to say, if he couldn't see his reflection, they weren't clean. So I would lean forward into the sink on tiptoes, trying to make sure that I wouldn't be awakened in the middle of the night by a belt. For I would then have to scrub them in the dark while he watched from the kitchen doorway telling me, stop crying, tell yourself to cry. That was a long time ago. But every now and again, as I stand at the sink in the kitchen, Letting the warm water caress my hands, inhaling the fresh scent of my dish detergent slash lotion. I think of those days. And I remember coconut brushes in my grandfather's belt. And I lean forward into the sun. So that was Jamaica. Very small place on the side of Connecticut. 146 miles tip to tip. And somehow, through fate, God, whatever you want to call it, I made it on the airplane to get to America. Land of the free, home of the brave. In Jamaica, they literally said, when I was eight years old, that they actually, the streets were paved with gold. Everybody had everything. All the books showed all the little kids in little hats and their scarves, and they were sledding down the hills, and he thought every child had a mountain to sled down, and, you know, and I looked forward to getting here, and I came, and it wasn't quite like that. It was a little different. But there were still good things. So we moved from Jamaica to Brooklyn. And I remember Brooklyn Saturday morning cartoons relaxing the line. The gun booth fixes is on. And the remote pool off the one time I went to watch my show. And I remember shopping for the no frills, getting milk out on the window sill. Where we come so far. Can't go back no more, no more. Mayonnaise sandwiches, homemade bandages. Before he paid the bill, my father asked what the damage is. Mom was a friend of his. Now she can't depend on him. He flew the coop, she can't recoup the loot. She left to him credit cards, too. Trips to Jamaica to see his other love. He was a clever figure. Some people like to give. My father was a taker. He was a heartbreaker, lying old moth maker. Gave me emotional hate babies. Must be a daybreaker. Got married and still was a play. I was a hater. My half brother had the full family, mommy and a daddy. What about? I remember Brooklyn Saturday morning cartoons relaxing on wine. The kung fu flex is on. Where's the remote? Who lost it? The one time I want to watch my show. 
And I remember shopping for the no frills and putting milk out on the windowsill. Man, we come so far. We can't go back no more, no more. On Saturdays, Daddy came. I was always glad he came. Mama would be happy to be telling jokes and playing games. I ain't really saying names. But that is really strange. Lately, seems like he really hates me. Could it be that I trouble him? Look just like another him. He's not gonna let me do anything to make him run again. Life is fun again. Mom is just fun again. It's been 11 weeks. When my daddy come again? But he's out there, hustling, heavy in the streets. I'm filled with disrespect with the bitch <coughs> on my feet. I'm keeping my cool, getting good grades in school. That fool ain't coming back. He must think that I'm a tool or a stool pigeon. He must think this is easy living. One day, I'm going to pay him back. God willing. Until then, I had to make a track to reminisce. Back in Brooklyn, chilling with my sis. My memory is like a melody. Playing a secret symphony. Jefferson Avenue, one number 217. Second floor, latchkey, single parent family. Can't just sit the home in order 15 minutes after three. That's the way it has to be. Nobody got my back for me. I promise you my son you can only write a song for me. She used to come for me, but daddy wouldn't come for me. That's the parent that I gave my love to always, constantly. She did it all for me, and did it all with ease. Until she rest in peace, she can get the best for free. Because I remember Brooke Norm back in 88. I only got to ride my bike on block party days. But now I celebrate. I'm living kind of straight. I might not be a millionaire, I got a greater faith. I came to elevate, energize, motivate. Some people hate, really though, there was no debate. I'm a mama's boy. Daddy's leftovers. When he left, he didn't even look over his cold shoulder. You know how I know? Because I watched him go. I nearly froze with the window pressed against my nose. So that's a little bit about part of this, right? I grew up with a uh, single parent mom. And still, my mother was always out. Go to school. Go to school. Stay in school. Go to your best. Get to school. How many people love their mother? You know, who wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your mom? You know, like, really, it's, I mean, mom and dad is too. I don't know if you stay home dad. I gotta be fast and pops too. But I grew up with, you know, the, 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 the standard, uh, unfortunate, typical, you know, story of the African American male, single parent mom, whose mother and your father were two, three jobs. And, you know, this is the sort of obstacle that comes to you, the challenge that comes to you from the beginning. You know, mom's working really hard. She can't check the homework. But she's saying, I'm going to get it done. And she's, you know, and, and there's a biblical aspect to it. So I went to church a lot. Um, and that was where I got a lot of community um, aspects. So it's just a piece from the world. Dad was trying to get at me. My mother prayed for me. Demons wouldn't let me be, but my mother prayed for me. See, I've run so far away. No matter how far I stray, I know I'll find a brighter day because my mother prays for me. My mother gave her life on the cross of broken dreams. Sacrificed her future for the uncertainty inside of her womb. Sometime after my genesis came a revelation that I was to be a child of promise. I was to be her resurrection. So she led me down the aisle and laid me on the altar every Sunday at the church folks lurched out, rocked and swayed. She prayed for me. Until her knees left the pressures in the floor. My mother is a metaphor for magnificence. A beautiful black woman, the color of honey. She breastfed me with the milk of her wisdom. She straightened me out with the rod of her discipline. It took a steady hand to be Bible verses into my bare bottom. But her bosom was the safest haven this side of heaven. I snuggled close to her when storms came. Set soup from silver spoons when sickness came. My mother's name is a refrain that remained etched inside my brain beside the fifth commandment when temptation came. She's the reason I've never slit my vein and sniffed cocaine to bring me pain. She's that same woman who steadies me still today. When I get despondent and need to drown in despair, she is there with a soothing voice and a quick scripture. Reminding me that though my night skies had heavy and starless, joy comes in the mornings when days like today. I celebrate the woman who was reborn the day I came into the world. The woman whose faith is my foundation, whose excellence is my example. I celebrate the day God chose to create her on the ground. My mother. The devil tried to get at me, but my mother prayed for me. Demons wouldn't let me be, but my mother prayed for me. See, I run so far away, but no matter how far I stray, I know I'll find a brighter day because my mother prays for me.
So it takes a certain amount of time, you know, for uh, the matriculation and for the growth to the next step, right? And you guys are putting a lot of time. I don't understand a lot of nights late, right? Anybody stay up late, you know, all night sessions, studying, to get to this. Anything worth having, you have to work hard for it. I'm the first in my family to earn a four year degree. So you guys are the first to earn a degree, and you're going to be the first to earn a four year You're on a path. And I'm just here to tell you that it is a very worthwhile path. You know, from me setting that example, my sisters have been undergoing to college, have done college, gotten degrees. My mother, my mother, I have to say, my mother got uh, graduated me first. 55 years old. And this is the one who said to me when I was in college, going through the hard times, you know, not having enough money to afford your books. I was borrowing my friend's books on Monday for the class that was on Wednesday. I was Xeroxing the chapters and highlighting the night. I worked three jobs in college. You know, but she said, do not leave school and come home to help me. The best thing you can do is stay here. I'm really glad I was able to do this. I'm really glad to be here celebrating with you what you're doing. So I'd have to do like a, a, a fun 